Want to see a football betting strategy that wins repeatedly? Check this out. So I track the results on this super simple betting strategy over the space of 30 days in Excel. I'm gonna reveal all the bets, the secret behind how the strategy works, why it's a repeat winner, and how it secures a substantial profit on the unders overs football betting market. It relies on a couple of basic indicators that anyone can find each day, as you'll see in just a second. But first, I need to explain why it works. It's pointless showing you the indicators without understanding, and it's way more useful than giving out football betting tips as you'll be able to identify these opportunities for yourself. Sometimes the situation evolves and prices change whilst looking for them, so doing it this way gives you maximum value. If you agree, smash the subscribe button for more in the future, because if you like betting on the unders and overs market, this is the best strategy that you'll ever see. Here are the results for the first 10 days of using this football betting strategy. Look, you can see it doesn't guarantee a winner on every bet, although I repeatedly win more than I lose whilst using it. There were 16 bets to level 50 pound stakes with only seven of them winning. Nine lost producing a strike rate of 43.75%, getting average odds of 2.29 on each bet would have resulted in break even. Except we didn't get odds representing the strike rate. We got average odds of 2.66 over those 16 bets, leaving a profit of £112.50 at day 10. Now don't panic if that went over your head, it's super simple and I'm going to explain further, but the point I'm making here is the selections were a higher price than they should have been. Mathematically, if I keep doing this, it means that I win more than I lose in the long run, and that's a fact. Nobody can predict the future, so there's no point trying. This strategy works because it focuses on repeatedly getting value odds, which means I'm guaranteed to win. It's a same reason that betting companies make millions every week because they can't predict the future either. It's just that this strategy ensures that the value proposition is the other way around on my side. To illustrate, if I reduce the average odds of my 10 days results to a price below the 2.29 average, the final result would have been a loss. And that's how a sports book makes a profit. So let me explain exactly how the strategy works and how I'm picking these bets. Then I'll show you the best places where the opportunities arise and why. So take a look at my screen here showing Argentinian match odds. On the left, we have the odds of Betfair's exchange. Exchanges are the best guide to true price in real time. There's not a huge amount of money in the market, but you can see that over 2.5 goals odds are between 2.36 and 2.6. Now there's a gap in the price spread, but the market is telling us that it believes the true odds are somewhere between the two prices. For reference, the midpoint between those two prices is 2.48. Now, if we compare that to the sportsbook odds on the right-hand side of the screen, bearing in mind it doesn't include commission on bets, you'll see that the sportsbook is providing some value here. The corresponding over 2.5 goals bet is currently priced at 2.55 on the sportsbook, higher than the midpoint of 2.48 on the exchange. The reason I'm highlighting this is because it's a clear indicator that the sportsbook's bet is overpriced in this instance. Betting on it means we get a bigger price than the marketplace deems the bet is worth. It's a value pick. By repeatedly betting it, we'll win eventually, even if we encounter a string of losing bets. It's really important that we remember this and believe in the maths because the strategy doesn't work if we start chasing losses, taking a smaller price, or getting emotional about short-term variance in results. Distribution in results can be erratic at the best of times, but long-term probability brings them into the line. Looking at the results by day 20, you can see that this is true. There had been 33 bets in total, with 18 losers yielding a strike rate of 45.45%, equivalent to odds of 2.2 on average, meaning if the bet had been priced at 2.2, I would have broken even. But here's the really important bit I want you to understand here. By using this strategy, the average odds were actually 2.63, significantly higher than they should have been, which is why the results stand at a profit of £300 and 50 pence. And that's great, but where's the best situations to find value like this on a daily basis? And also, what did the results look like by day 30? Now, you've probably noticed there haven't been any Premier League matches amongst the results here, and there's a very good reason for this. I've specifically targeted low quality football here because this is where the strategy is most effective. Sportsbooks take millions of bets on football every day of the week, and most of them are on the popular matches, such as those in the Premier League, which 
which means they spend a lot more time and money monitoring and changing their odds to make sure they have a good margin built into the prices that they offer. It's opposite of what we're looking to do here with this strategy. In effect, they're making sure that odds are bad value and extremely hard to beat in the majority of cases. This strategy works repeatedly on the unders, overs, betting markets on the low quality stuff because it's an additional market where the pricing isn't so sharp. It's less likely that we'll find value in the market odds or on the Premier League, although it does happen from time to time. Now, the time I look for these bets is important too. Typically, it's six to 12 hours before the match starts that the value is available. Finding them as the market liquidity is forming is best. Setting up automated alerts can help, although I'm not gonna go through that in this video. But before we go through the final results, for the full 30 days, there's something very important you need to know about this football betting strategy because there's a downside. You can see it on my account here. Now, it's a shock for some recreational bettors, but bookies don't allow repeat winning for long. Despite advertising the opportunity to win, they're sore losers. When the little guy repeatedly beats them, they don't play fair. Betfair have state restricted my account for winning. Now, they'll only let me stake between 10 pence and £2.42 on this bet. They do it to anyone that consistently beating them on their sports book. It's proof that the strategy works and they know it, although it is frustrating as it limits the amount of money that can be made. If you want to win repeatedly, with this football betting strategy into the future, you'll need to use multiple sports books or acquire extra accounts. So let's see how I did over the 30 days and calculate the value margin for this strategy. If you're getting value, please subscribe down below. So over the course of 50 bets in 30 days, 27 of my over under bets lost. 23 of them won, leaving a total strike rate of 46%. There were one to three bets per day. The price and time of the bet is logged in line with the Betfair Sportsbook. You can see the corresponding over and under bet and its final result to the right of the spreadsheet. Given the ratio of winners to losers, it means the average betting odds would have had need to be 2.17 to break even. However, the average odds we got were actually 2.637, meaning there was a margin of 0.467 on our side on average. Nearly half a price point of value is big when it's a polarizing market where there are only two outcomes like this. To level 50 pound stakes, this football betting strategy yielded a profit of 534 pounds 50 over 30 days, which isn't a huge result, but it's extremely reliable. Unlike football accumulators, as I explained here in this video, if you've ever placed an accumulator bet, you just have to see it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.